What is going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Your guys, Cody and Derek, back for another one, guys, in the second episode here of our series, looking at the different positions, breaking them down, positional breakdowns. We are now at the running back position, and uh, we just talked about the quarterback position, so if you guys haven't checked that one out yet, be sure to go do so. Video um, will be up above here, so be sure to go check that one out and all the other videos that will be coming as well. So with that being said, Derek, the running back position is a very interesting one because of the fact that we're only two years removed, Derek, from the Colts having the best running attack in the NFL, right? I mean, Jonathan Taylor and what they were able to do with that running game in 2021, I mean, single-handedly was winning them games when they could not pass the football, right? I mean, this running back room was just electrical what they did. Now, a couple of years later, we, we look at this running back room, you know, Pretty much the same, you know, in terms of the main guy running the ball, but a few different tweaks since 2021, mainly the Colts, you know, shipping off Naheem Hines during the season last year and replacing him with Zach Moss. Um, and we'll get into all that. But what was your overall impression, man, of this running back room uh, 2021? What happened last year and then kind of what you think going into this year? Well, it was crazy because the uh, biggest strength of the Indianapolis Colts in 2021 became, you know, the, one of the weakest things uh, about their offense, you know, in total. Um, a multitude of different reasons for that being. The first reason uh, and the biggest one of that, Jonathan Taylor getting hurt. Uh, that was the biggest thing. Obviously, when you have a top three running back in the National Football League get injured, your rushing attack is going to suffer. Of course it is. We get that. But then there was a lot of multitude of different other reasons, which we're going to talk about, you know, throughout this series. Teams figured out pretty quickly that the offensive line really stunk and were unable to, you know, really be as efficient blocking uh, in every way last year. So that not only hurt the passing game, but it really hurt the run game because nobody was afraid of Matt, Ryan being able to throw the football down the field at all. So everyone was much closer. You had more uh, stacked boxes. You had more guys willing to run commit, which made it, again, extremely hard. And then on top of it, like we said before, the offensive line just not playing at a great level and that not even playing at a good level, not even playing at an average level most of the year. Uh, and then on top of it, Cody, you and I can both agree here that a coaching had a lot to do with it as well. Again, just somehow, some way, the Colts, when they had Frank Reich uh, there, just seemed to forget how to run the football. Uh, I just didn't get it. Naheem Hines in seven games, Cody, had 18 carries. In seven games, had 18 carries. I get that we were trying to have more rushes, you know, that year, um, I, I totally get it from Jonathan Taylor and maybe trying to get Deion Jackson in there. But, I mean, just to kind of give you an understanding of the carries breakdown, I mean, Philip Lindsay, the running back who was there for and only played in three games, Cody, had three less carries than Naheem Hines. Sam Ellinger had more rushing attempts uh, uh, as playing in those games than Naheem Hines did. So, you know, like his usage was non-existent uh, in the rushing game last year. I know it was because the offense was terrible last year. Very rarely did you get him involved in the passing game either. I mean, he wasn't, I mean, it's not like he got 25 receptions for 188 yards. He was, you know, higher than some of your other uh, wide receivers that you had on the roster. But I mean, they didn't utilize him well. And then, of course, you know, like I said, Jonathan Taylor got hurt. And then Zach Moss, he brought in halfway through the year. He turned out to be one of the biggest surprises of the last year. He was almost averaging, I mean, pretty much the last three weeks, Cody. I mean, he was averaging six yards a carry in the last three games of the season for the Indianapolis Colts. So, I mean, he was really taking his role very seriously. And Deion Jackson obviously, you know, did what he could do. You know, there was a couple games that he 
certainly tried his hardest to, you know, make an impact for the Indianapolis Colts. Unfortunately, it just didn't translate to wins. If the Colts don't get Jonathan Taylor back, then this running game just may just not get back to what it once was. I was looking at just the stats. It's pretty jarring, actually, um, from what it was in 2021 to 2022. So just, just for reference here, when it comes to the rushing attack. So the Colts in 2021, they had the second best rushing attack in terms of yardage. Um, they had the fifth, you know, ranked fifth in terms of rushing touchdowns, second in terms of yards per attempt. And uh, they were pretty solid o- overall. They were pretty good. They were, they were top five in pretty much every category when it came to running the football. And then you look at 2022 and it's just completely different. I mean, the Colts were, you know, 23rd in rushing yards, 30th in rushing touchdowns, 23rd in yards per attempt. So just, a complete difference, like just a complete shift from what it was because of some of the injuries, because of, you know, Frank Wright getting, you know, really being an awful offensive coordinator last year, an awful play caller last year in general, and then getting fired. And then Jeff Saturday coming in and could barely draw a playbook. Um, So that kind of stuff, you know, like that obviously really hurts. And obviously just not having the threat of a passing game at all. I mean, say what you want about Carson Wentz, but at least he could push the ball down the field at times. Like you had no threat of that last year. So teams knew that and they just they just stacked the box, right? They knew you couldn't beat them. They couldn't beat them over the top. You couldn't. I mean, they st- I mean, we st- we saw lots of stacked boxes in 2021, Cody, but at least like early on in the season, at least early on in the season, Carson Wentz gave you the opportunity to throw the football 50 plus yards down the field. I mean, at least like in certain games, you know, when San Francisco, Baltimore, uh, the Texans, you know, a few of these games, at least like Wentz really made you pay down the field. And that was, again, something that, you know, teams had to take into consideration. They had to at times. There was that little noise in the back of the linebackers heads like, okay, yeah, I got to I got to be aware of it. I got to be aware of it just a little bit. And it helps. But. And especially since the offensive line in 2021 was blocking so much better. But then in 2022, when you don't have, when you don't have the threat of throwing the football down the field mixed with the offensive line, not being able to block at all, then linebackers and everyone else are just like, I don't have to think I just do it. And if I mess up, most likely Matt Ryan's going to mess it up. So, yeah. Yeah. Just the combination. I mean, gosh, you look at it like just the shifting of the offensive line, which I know we'll talk about the offensive line in a later episode, but like the fact that you switch left tackle, you know, halfway through the season or whatever that was, the fact that your right guard got benched. You had two offensive linemen last year get benched as well. So like that kind of stuff, right? There's so many factors. And, and like even some of your best players, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, even Braden Smith for a little bit, like they were not playing what how they played in the past. They were not playing well at times. They were not playing up to the standard that we have held and they have held for themselves. And so, like, you know, you had players playing bad that were bad, and you had players who were supposed to be good playing a lot worse and playing down to what they were usually were used to them playing at. So, yeah, just a combination of all those things, I think, just really derailed um, your offense in general. And so you look ahead here, Derek, to, to 2023. You mentioned it. You know, Jonathan Taylor had that ankle surgery. He, you know, really didn't participate in the spring at all, but we're hoping he's back for training camp. I think he will be from what we've seen. It was kind of a minor, you know, surgery he had earlier in the offseason. Zach Moss had a couple nice games down the stretch. You know, you still have Deion Jackson there, and you actually have a threat of a passing game now and also a threat of a running game from a quarterback. That's just something that's a new element that you've never really had. You know, uh, Jonathan Taylor certainly never really had. Uh, Carson Wentz is probably the closest thing to that. But, yeah, it's just like there's so many new elements that just weren't present last year for these running backs. And I think that's going to go a long way for, number one, having players play better and open more holes for your running game. But, but number two, just being more predictable or less predictable than you were last year. being Having more ways that you can attack a defense and – you know, if you have that threat of a quarterback who can actually throw it down the field and you can do things with Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor and all these guys, like that's just going to help out your running back so much 
so, so much from what it was last year. Yeah, I mean, it's quite amazing just how that stuff uh, changed all in the span of a year. But again, for the most part, the, the main part of this conversation is this can all get broken down just to mainly one thing, and that's Jonathan Taylor being healthy. That's the big part here is just if Jonathan Taylor's healthy, fully healthy, he's a he's a threat to get 1,500 yards every season. And it, it's that is such a huge thing for a team, and especially for a team that has a young quarterback, has a new offensive coach, and it, it's a, it's a great thing to have if you're the Colts to have a guy back there that demands so much attention of an opposing defense. Because then, if you're a guy like Steichen and Jim Bob Cooter, that opens things up so much more for Anthony Richardson when defenses have to focus on the running back in the backfield. Uh, So that's a great thing. And, you know, that's going to be the other interesting part of this unit, Cody, is what does Shane Steichen and Jim Bob Cooter have up their sleeve for the running backs, right? They said, we're going to pass the score and run to win. That's the quote that I'm getting right from Shane Steichen himself. I mean, clearly Shane Steichen has, you know, the golden idea of understanding how to win football games, right? He knows that running the football is not going to get you points as much as you would like, but you have to get points by being able to pass the football. But in order to win football games, you have to be able to run the football. And I just wonder how much more different is this team going to get utilized by running the football with a new coaching scheme? Right. I was just looking at where the Eagles were in terms of running the football last year. I mean, they, they're pretty good overall. They're pretty efficient in running the ball in general. I mean, they were fifth overall in terms of running the ball. And, you know, when you think of Philadelphia, you don't really think of them running the football, but they were very effective with Miles Sanders as their lead back last year. And we all, I think we would all say that uh, it's pretty clear that Jonathan Taylor is better running back than Miles Sanders, who just had 1,200 yards under Shane Steichen last year. So, um, the ways that they're able to use it, right? The ways they're able to use uh, their running backs, I think, is always just so interesting too. Because you know, you have your lead back who you think will be Jonathan Taylor, and then they also had a couple other guys, Boston Scott and Kenneth Gainwell, last year that they used in spurts as well in the running and passing game. And then obviously Jalen Hurts had nearly 800 yards rushing last year from the quarterback position. So like, there's so many variety that the Colts will be able to use if Anthony Richardson is the guy out there just from his legs as well that will help this running attack get even better. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, the different roles, right? What is Zach, what's Zach Moss's role, right? What's Deion Jackson's role? What's Evan Hall's role? Like, you know, what? I'm just so intrigued to see, like, who gets what role and, like, how are they utilized, right? It, it's going to be so intriguing to me. Because there's, there's a lot – I feel like there's a good amount of talent in that running back room still, obviously Taylor, but I feel like there's some solid like options there for Shane Steichen and company. So I'm just intrigued to see the ways they utilize these guys and the, the way that they're just going to uh, honestly make these running backs dangerous, right? And that's something we haven't seen outside of Taylor. I mean, the Colts, we know, you know it was well documented how little they use Naheem Hines. And now you're like, dang it, I wish we still had Hines – you think about all the ways that Steichen could use him in the passing attack. Um, but regardless of that, it, it'll be interesting to see the ways that the Colts use these running backs. And and I'm just looking forward to kind of seeing what the different roles are. Yeah, I mean, it'll be, it'll be awesome because I look forward to, uh, you know, running some of the schemes that the Eagles were able to run in years past. Um, Obviously, from a pure passing perspective, I don't think that things are going to change much. Obviously, Richardson is a lot more athletic than Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has, you know, really become a great quarterback in the sense of being able to utilize both his legs and his arm. Uh, He has done a phenomenal job at that. And then, you know, they're able to run this zone scheme that gets guys open and utilizes the movement of the offensive line, which I think is another thing that the Colts couldn't do last year, Cody, because, you know, when you had Matt Ryan, who's more of a stick 
I mean, they didn't. Th- there's not a lot of zone scheme options for uh, the Indianapolis Colts to run in that regard, and especially when you lost Jonathan Taylor, made it even harder to do that. So I think now when you have this quarterback that can run a four four and a running back that can run a four three, and you know, it's and then you have these these gadget players like Isaiah McKenzie and Ashton Doolin and a few and a few of these other guys like this, you know, I feel like uh Shane Steichen has more weapons and ways to kind of trick defenses now, which again was a way that they were able to beat teams in Philly because if you overcommitted too much to, you know, trying to figure out the trick uh, plays and the zone schemes that they were running, then you left some guy open in the middle of the field. And that's where a guy like Jelani Woods, Kylan Granson, or Josh Downs can absolutely kill you in the middle of the field because of their ability after the catch to make plays. So, I mean, it just seems like for the running play perspective, you know, you get, this new coaching staff and I'm really looking forward to it. But again, it just continues to run through Jonathan Taylor and him being healthy. And if he's healthy with a new offensive scheme and how they want to utilize it and getting that offensive line more involved, then I think that this rushing attack is going to come back. Will it be 2021 all over again, Cody? That's hard because that's a very, that is very hard to replicate that again. But to say 1,500 yards isn't out of the question, I think that's that's an easy thing for Jonathan Taylor if he stays healthy. Well, hopefully it, it, it's pretty balanced where it won't get to that point, you know, where they were so reliant on the run game. I mean, they were one of the top teams in terms of attempts as well in 2021. So hopefully the efficiency goes up a little bit more, right, in the running game. And you can kind of even it out a little bit between the run and the pass. Um, and if that works, you know, that's great. That's honestly better to get Taylor less run, uh, but more effectiveness. So, guys, let us know your thoughts overall on the running back room. There's a lot of different guys to talk about. We mentioned pretty much everyone who we think probably has a chance at the final 53-man roster. But maybe there's another player that you want us to talk about as well that we maybe, maybe missed. Let us know those things in the comments below. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, guys, go Colts. Yeah.